This is the Blood Red Podcast from the Liverpool Echo. Hello everyone and welcome to a very special Blood Red Podcast. I'm your host Joe Rimmer. I'm joined by Paul Gorse today to speak to a very special guest. He's a multiple time WWE champion. He's a massive red and he even makes the tall Paul Gorse look quite small. Um, <laughs> hello Seamus, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to be back. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a good couple of years. Um, last time you were in was just before Kiev. Yeah. Um, obviously ended in heartbreak, but it's not been too bad since then, has it? No, it's been amazing since then. Um, and, you know, when I was here last time, uh, we were, I was very confident going into that game. Um, I ended up going to Boston uh, after a tour, I think it was. I was watching the Phoenix landing with the lads. Unbelievable atmosphere. Just goes to show how many uh, Liverpool fans there are all over the world, you know what I mean? And how passionate they are, even if they can't get to Anfield, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, but... Uh, it was just a start. It was just a start again of of where we are now. You know, it was just there was a bigger picture than just one game. And I think that's the most important thing to take out of it. And back to back Champions League finals is incredible for any team. Mm-hmm. Any team in the world, any any European top, top European team will be uh, will be proud of that. But you know, I was just saying earlier on, it's like last year since we won the the Champions League to now, it just feels like one long season, doesn't it? Yeah. Is that just me or is this? Does it feel that way? It doesn't feel. It just feels like it's it's just rolling on. It's because they've never slowed down. Yeah, well, yeah, there's been like a bounce effect, hasn't there? From winning that Champions League, they've just taken that success into the season, and, and it's just rolled on and rolled mm-hmm. on. And because you you don't really see them lose now, so it does feel like it's just one continuous yeah long run. Mm-hmm. Um, have you had much of a chance to to see much this season? I've watched pretty much every game. I have uh, this NBC app. That's it's. Free to free to air on uh, US TV, so I log on to the NBC app. It's great. Like I have a gym at home, Brave Change Gym in the Gaff. Like I turn the garage into a gym, and I'll put it on in there as well and watch the game in there. Sometimes, like you know what I mean. It's just I watched the West Ham game in there actually when they, when we beat them three um, two. I just saw that game. I was like, I was like, man, they're just looking tired. You know what I mean? And then mm. when the Watford, so when the, I saw the Watford game, I wasn't really surprised. Uh, you know, people were like, oh, I was like. That's the that's the level that Liverpool have like set, you know, like yeah. that, that that the fact that they lost the game was, you know, just unthinkable. But the lads like have been going nonstop, you know, um, and just the way they play, just so aggressive going forward, so aggressive coming back, you know. I just have to remind people they're actually human beings, and you know what they've the the record they've set is incredible, regardless of this invincible stuff and all that. Like, you know, uh, we're, we're Arsenal even in the, the European Cup or were, were, were teams still out of it at that stage? Uh, yeah, they, they got beat by Chelsea, I think, um, in 2004, was it? Um, that was the following year, I think, wasn't it? But the, the, the year they finished invincible, they definitely got knocked mm. out. Um, Where well, there was the European, never, was the European, the European Cup yeah, then, was it? They, yeah, they never made much of an impact in it. They had a lot of draws, I remember. 12 yeah, draws, draws, yeah. Games, yeah, right? I remember that, yeah. They could yeah. have had one. They could have exactly. won more games than that invincible side won that year, this this season. Mm. So, in many Not ways, worried about it, man. Yeah, 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 not worried about it. But you know what's funny? I haven't gone around here because uh, I'm... I'm no sleep, loads of caffeine. But <laughs> the the Watford game actually reminded me when we last won the league. I remember I was 12 years old and we were playing Southampton and you had the teletext. May I had teletext at the time. Teletext was brand new. Or with our house it was. And um, I remember seeing it was 4-1 at the Dell. And I was like, couldn't believe it. Like, how do we lose four? Like <laughs> Liverpool losing four one, you know. I was I was a bit I was inconsolable <laughs> for like a week, and I, the Watford game kind of felt like that as well, you know. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're again they're human, but this has been an unbelievable season. Hmm. Well, you watched obviously we, we talked about Kiev. Where did you watch the, the last the uh, the final in Madrid? So I was in a, I was in, I went up to Louisville. I was off the road after the, the concussion I got at Mania mm-hmm. and I drove up to Louisville because it's about two and a half hours from Nashville where I'm living now. And this guy called uh, Mustafa Ali um, and he, uh, he was fasting for Ramadan. So I'd already seen the first game and Rusev's gaff. He's a Madrid fan, right? So there was the slagging that went on after, <laughs> after the, the first, the, the previous European Cup final. Um, but, uh, he was, he was, you know, obviously he wanted to see us beat Barcelona as well because he hates Bar- He's like a Madrid fan, hates Barcelona. But uh, it was three nil, was crushed. So I went to the second leg and I went to this bar. I was trying to just work, you know, waste some time. I couldn't drink anything. I couldn't eat anything because I was doing this fasted 
workout. So I was trying to do, you can't eat from, from sunrise to sunset, you can't eat. So I was trying to replicate that and then do the workout because, you know, that that's the way he does it. He does it mm-hmm. every day for, for yeah. Ramadan. It's insane. Like, and uh, I was in this bar in Louisville, Kentucky. I don't, I don't know how it just appeared on the map. There was five people in it, man. And you know, like they're hardcore. They're hardcore drinkers when you're in there at like mm. one o'clock in the day. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and there's yeah, five yeah. of them. <laughs> but as the game went on, I was just jumping around. I couldn't eat. I had, a, I had a pint of water in front of me and whatever. And I was just like, I couldn't drink just, just to have it there or whatever. But Liverpool scored one, then he scored two. They scored three. I was jumping around the kip. And then when the fourth went in, I was going ape. And everyone, all the five people at the bar were just like, <laughs> like <laughs> looking at me like I was some sort of lunatic. <laughs> what are you drinking? I want some of that. <laughs> Um, but it was insane. And then, uh, myself and Cesaro, then, uh, I got, as soon as I got the car, I was shaking, man. I, I, I was, I got in the car, I was just shaking. Everything was, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And, uh, I just got on the phone to Cesaro and I said, um, let's get the tickets. So we, we, we had a contact, we bought tickets and then we booked the, uh, the flights and then we booked the hotel and we both went over together uh, as fans. Oh, amazing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that, that was that. It must have been, a, you know, an incredible experience. I mean, I know a few people who were in Madrid and were talking about how hot it was, but how great the yeah. play in the square was and, and wherever else. It must have been a, a great, great weekend that. It was great. The only problem is Cesaro doesn't drink. So uh, a couple of places I want to go to, it didn't really work out that way. You know what I mean? Because yeah, he, the only thing he drinks is coffee. <laughs> uh, but it, it was unbelievable. We got we got we got to the uh, we got to the stadium and everything. It was so hot, man. It was crazy. Uh, and, um, you know, interacting with the fans and everything and straight up to the shop, you know what I mean? You want to get your memorabilia yeah. in for the Champions League. Uh, uh, Finn Balor was there supporting another WB guy, supporting uh, Spurs. Oh, of course, yeah. 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 Is he a big Spurs fan, is he? Yeah, yeah he's yeah. a big Spurs fan. He's a big Spurs fan when they're winning. Oh, nice. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, I remember the only thing, only regret I had about the whole thing was going to the arena Getting into the stadium about an hour and a half before, too early before kickoff. Because when we got into the arena, I went to get a beer and they were out selling non alcoholic beer or Heineken oh, or whatever. Yeah. So I was like, just, ah. So I was warning everybody, I was texting everybody, shouting out the, over, the, over the arena, don't come in, there's no beer. But um, yeah, there you go. Amazing. Well, they're two wins away um, now from the, from the title as, as this podcast goes out. Uh, we've been like, mad in here trying to work out permutations for the last few weeks um, but we know two wins does it um, obviously the, the derby is the next game and then in three games time um, it's Man City at the Etihad which falls on the same day as Wrestlemania um, how's that going to work for you? I don't know any chance I can uh, <laughs> skedaddle yeah from uh... <laughs> we were looking at it before sorry lads I can't do Mania this year <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Liverpool hopefully will already become, will already have become uh, Premier League champions. And of course, you can watch that, celebrate that, celebrate and beat Man City, and then go on to watch uh, WrestleMania on BT Sport, streaming live on BT Sport. <laughs> so it's, I mean, you're going to be up to about three or four o'clock in the morning, but it's going to be worth it, you know? A couple of cups of coffee or uh, a couple of nice pints of Guinness, keep you going. Honestly, I'd love to see them win it at Goodison. I think that would be fantastic. Really, I think yeah. I really would. I mean, like, I don't know. I just, I don't, I, I, was, I was feeling that Arsenal can beat City yeah. uh, on Wednesday. Tomorrow, it's tomorrow, tomorrow right? Yeah. The game's tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow, yeah. Um, and Burnley are down the bottom as well, and they need to they need to scrap a point as well. So it, it really could come down to Monday at Goodison yeah. Park, yeah. Yeah. which would be phenomenal. Like, I just, uh, I, it just, it's, it's so funny. I, I, I don't know. We waited so long to get a Premier League title, and uh, it just, it just went in our grasp. Now it's insane. Like, and how, like, how far we are ahead of everybody of, of Man City and Leicester and every other team. It's crazy. It's funny how like Liverpool have waited thirty years for a title, and if you'd have said in the summer you just take it, however it comes. But as the season's gone on, Liverpool fans seem to be getting a little bit more picky. If you want to win it that day, they'd rather win it this day. It's insane, right? It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, you know, your ideal scenario would be at Goodison Park then, would it? I think it'd be great. You know, <laughs> I think it'd be fantastic. Just so I can uh, ring up uh, Robbie Brookside. <laughs> I rub it in his face. <laughs> We've had him in here a couple of times. Right? Massive blue, isn't he? Robbie, yeah, he's a massive blue. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, have, do you, do you um, give him a bit of stick, do you, whatever? Whenever I see him, yeah. he's always like, he always, any woman I'm with, he always just gives them stick yeah. on my behalf. He just, he's just, he can't, he can't understand why I'm a Liverpool fan. <laughs> I can't understand why he's an Everton fan. 
But uh, no, nah, he uh, this is great rivalry there. We're both like we're both with mates and stuff like that. But it's that's that's what brings you out. How do you have football? You know, it brings out that that rivalry. You have crack. You know, you follow your team to the end. You know what I mean? Um, and there's always banter going back and forth between you. It's like you know, just the problem is like there's not much. It's not what you can pick off Liverpool, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> just so good. Yeah. Am I right in saying you were at a game in pre-season? Hmm? Yeah, I yeah. went, uh, we drove, uh, me and my girlfriend, I put the dogs in the car and we drove about seven and a half hours from Nashville up to up to uh, South Bend, Indiana. Yeah. And we went to see the game at Notre Dame against Borussia Dortmund. Yeah. So obviously after finishing so close last season, did you get the feeling then in pre-season that we could be seeing a, a title winning team this time around? The game I saw, not really. <laughs> uh, I think we, I think we lost two one. I think mm. it was. We weren't very, but we weren't that. We weren't great at all. I think Mignolet was in goal. He would have, would have been. Yeah, I think lots of them were still on the on the holidays, weren't they? All, all the big stars. Yeah, mm. they were, and they needed it after the last season as well. But no, it was great just to get up there and see it. I mean, I didn't expect much from the game. I didn't expect much in preseason. I just know that the following, the, the previous year when we were preseason, we were beating everybody. Yeah, Remember, yeah, we beat Man yeah, City and then yeah. we beat United four yeah, yeah. one, and they're on a they're on a roll. Like, uh, but I wasn't expecting much. Just just went up just to see the lads play. Um, got to meet a couple of guys uh, after the game as well. Um, Liverpool have been very very gracious to me. You know, like I've been very very lucky. Anytime I go to the stadium, and I go like everybody there, like they're just so so nice and so uh, accommodating. Um, and that's the great thing about the club, man. It's just mm. a very, very family orientated club, you know. Mm. It's just every, you know. I don't know. It's like when you walk in there, it's like you say hello to people who work there and staff and everybody. It's like you've known each other for years, and you just met them for the first time, you know. And that's that's the magic about that club. That's why I feel it's just again, it really is just it's like a family. Mm -hmm. And you were at Anfield today for the uh, Atlético Madrid press conference. Yes, uh, yes, I was there. How did, how did you find that? It was, oh, it was surreal. I was, you know, um, just watch, just, I don't know, you know, you see on, you know, YouTube and stuff, but like, I just remember Klopp got asked a question at the end there, uh, and which was actually a really stupid question. And, uh, you know, he fired up on your man. So it was, a little, it was quite eventful at the mm -hmm. end of the press conference. But honestly, I, in a situation with wrestling, I do a lot of media stuff, right? And you get asked the same, like, since 09 to now, I get asked, it's the same. There's like, there's about 10 questions you get asked that are always the same, you know? And I always try and like, put a spin on them. So just for myself as well. So it's not the same thing coming out, you know? But I just want to ask him, if you guys had a question for me, there's two questions I was going to ask him. One was like, how do you sit here every week <laughs> and, and just answer Answered the same like questions <laughs> over and over again? He must have a pain in his hole. It's hard that I was thinking of doing once to ask him, to be honest. <laughs> I know, <laughs> it's the same week. things. <laughs> and then the other one was like, if I could borrow, uh, if I could borrow Virgil uh, as a tag team partner for WrestleMania, uh, for WrestleMania 36, <laughs> just for the one day, I'd have him back on the Monday. And if they already won the league by the answer, they wouldn't need him for the for the city game, right? So if I could borrow Virgil for WrestleMania just for one day, that was what I was going to ask him. But uh, how does he answer the same questions over and over again? It must be like Groundhog Day. He must be going, oh, here we go again. Yeah, what are they going to ask me today? Yeah, it, I mean, it has been half the challenge this season, trying to ask new ways to... Because they've been winning every game, so there's nothing you can really pick fault at or criticise. So when... Um, when they, when they actually lost the game, it, it give pauses a chance to mm. to you know talk about something different. Yeah, but, you know, he, he always he always says the, the, the right thing, and, and and you know it's as you say, he, he does tend to get asked the same question a lot. Of it's always <laughs> focusing on the team, the next game. Uh, that's just the way they work. But it's it's what's got them into this position, I, I guess. You know, after twenty nine games. No, I agree. It's like a contractual thing. You have to you have to do press conferences. Is that it? Is yeah. that the media yeah. stuff? You yeah. have to do a press conference. So like, yeah. So Premier League contract one before every game. And Dude, I play. would I would literally go scouting around the world and find someone who looks exactly like me. <laughs> <laughs> and I pay him a load of money just to go in there. I mean, there has to be someone else who look, you can look like Klopp with the glass and the hat, Come you know? On, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just send them in. Yeah. Here, just answer those questions, will you? Yes and no answers. I, I don't know how to yes, do it. Imagine every <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> next one. <laughs> well, um, at the risk of asking you questions that you've been asked a million times, we're going to talk a bit about your own career. Yeah. Um, 
You're back as a singles competitor. Yes. Uh, long layoff through injury for the concussion you talked about before. Yeah. How was the layoff? How good does it feel to be back? I'll be honest. Uh, the layoff is tough, but I um, I just stuck my head into the gym, my diet and everything, mm. and I just wanted to come back in the best shape I possibly could. Since I've been back, uh, I had a lot of high hopes. Um, it's kind of been a little bit disappointing, to be honest with you. Uh, I just felt like there was a plan in, in, in place that was going to lead to WrestleMania that has changed a couple of times. So I feel like I've really not been able to get at a, at a, at a, at a second gear. Like I had the stuff with Shorty, you know, we went to, the, went to the Royal Rumble. I was supposed to have my return match in Dallas, which is an unbelievable place to wrestle. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic, right? And uh, it was a packed house as well going into the Rumble because the, 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 uh, it was a Friday, then the, the Rumble was on Sunday. I was excited about it, like, but it was a short, like, and then they said, like, now you're going to wrestle Shorty G at the Rumble. I was like, okay, grand. So then I find out we're on the pre-show yeah. and then we're two hours before the actual pay-per-view kicks off. So I'm going out, I haven't been, I haven't been in the rings for, uh, for like, oh, I don't know, eight, eight, nine months. And then we're going out there and there's nobody in the crowd. Like obviously with the cameras are able to show because there's people in the back, but like right around the ring, mate, there was like, like there was some issue with like uh, a lot of people on the hard cam side with the camera art, like, the camera I'm looking at now, like mm. people in that, as, if I'm the ring and the camera I'm pointing into, like that that kind of area, there's a lot of like friends and family in there and stuff, like a lot of people. And there was some issue with tickets. So there was like maybe 10 people there. I'm like, so you're walking into this massive baseball stadium and there's nobody around you. So, and, and one of the things that we did, we had thought we had a great match, thought we had call a great technical story, but the problem is the fans around you, they create the atmosphere, they create the noise. I mean, it obviously comes up when they're on the ring, but like, there was nobody there, man. Mm. It was insane. I was just, just, it was a bit, a huge disappointment. Then we had another match with Shorty G and Apollo, and it's kind of like, I just feel like I'm floating right now. I, was, I had such a great mission to come back and tear it up. Oh, look, oh, music, which was denied, because they said, they said no one would remember the music, even though everybody's been screaming out for uh, too many lies, you know what I mean? Um, or too many limes, or whatever people sing to it. But yeah, man, it's been kind of like, I don't know, a bit of a, it's a, a disappointment. Is it is it difficult for someone like yourself who's been in big spots, you know, main events and, and high positions on the card to being back in the opener after such a long layoff with injury that, you know, as you say, there it is disappointing, but, you know, is, is that something that you, you find hard getting used to? You know, it's never, it's never, it's never easy to get used to, you know, like, that comeback, that moment where you come back and people haven't seen you for a while, it, it, it is a real, a great, like, there's a lot of momentum you can build from that. You know, you can come back, you get you get rolling, it's great. Like, that's what they say, it's like Taker used to do it all the time. Like, he'd get injured now and all, but he, he'd go away and come back. And you come back, it just, it keeps your, it prolongs your career. Mm -hmm. But when you come back and you get that initial role and that re the initial reaction from the crowd, it's awesome. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you can ride that, that, that crest that wave for a while. Um, but it just, it never, it never happened. Like from the creative perspective, it just, it was just, I was like, they didn't know what to do. You know what I mean? And, uh, it just feels like it just kind of fell flat, you know, but you always have to be ready. I'm still ready. I'm still training as hard as I ever have trained. And I know, I know what I want. That's the Intercontinental Championship and become the first ever uh, ultimate Grand Slam champion at WWE, just one title away from it. Um, it's with Seamus Light now, uh, Shane, the uh, Sami Zayn, but uh, <laughs> the poor man Seamus, as they say. But um, yeah, it's you know that's that's the crack. So just I'm just ready to get stuck into something, sink my teeth into something, and get back to the top where I know I belong and I know where I can I can easily be and hang with the best of the best. You happy to be a singles wrestler again after your uh, your run with Cesaro? I think. I think the, the bar needed a bit of a break. I think we've done everything we possibly could. We had won five tag team titles. And again, we were running, we were running out of road. We were running into cul-de-sacs. So uh, I think it's good, you know, like you have to keep changing it up, whether it's your look or it's your character or like the, ta the tag team thing with Cesaro was fantastic. And it gave a new dynamic to, to my character being in WWE since for what, over 10 years. But going back to singles again is fresh. You know what I mean? 
So you go back and the old look, the old hair, the old, old beard, as you can see. Um, and then, you know, and you can always come back to the tag team because I feel like we've, we've created a legacy there. But if sometimes if you stay in something too long, mm -hmm. it just gets diminished. Do you know what I mean? Like it just, it just, you know, by coming in and out of stuff uh, before it's, you know, around its course, I think it keeps it fresh. I think it's the, the best thing to do. It's, you just got to play whatever cards you've got as best you can. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned The Undertaker there. He's a perfect example of someone like that who yeah. took, a, took quite a lot of time off across the course of his career just to freshen things up and, and come back with a, you know, a, a new lease of life and, and you know, the, the crowd on his side once again. That's that's obviously something that, that you've done. Yeah, Regal told me that a long time ago. He said, like, you know, Taker's, yeah, look at Undertaker, so smart, you know. Like, obviously, his initial career, he was there quite a long time. Now, he's had some injuries, you know. He has a lot of injuries and he's, like, been through a lot of surgeries because that's his style. He's very, you know, physical in the ring. He does like a lot of dive. He does a mania. He'll do that dive over the top. But you know, he's, you know, he's a big lad, and he he's taken a lot of knocks over his career. But he, you know, he'd go away. I you kind of see it like he's running out of road or whatever. You know, something would happen. He'd go get something fixed. That's been nagging him. He'd work through it. You know, he'd like if he had like a hip problem, he he'd work through that hip problem. But then, you know, at the moment he's seen an opportunity where like, okay, this storyline is going this way, this way, this way. Then he go, you know what, I'm going to get this fixed now. And then he'd come back again and be fresh. And very, 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 very smart. Very smart with it. But uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, that's one of the reasons he's a legend in our business. You mentioned the Intercontinental title before. Was that your big ambition coming back? Yes. And is that still your big ambition? Definitely for still. It's, it's still, still my big ambition. That's all I. That's all I care about right now is the Intercontinental Title. I put a tweet out the other day um, uh, when I watched the pay for the Nomination Chamber, and I was like, "Listen," uh, I was just saying like Sami Zayn won it, so I was like, you know, point my uh, point the target at Sami Zayn. But that's what I want. I want the un Ultimate Grand Slam Championship. By the way, I was I was I give you an example. They told me uh, to mention that I was in the Elimination Chamber. So in a promo on SmackDown, I entered myself into the Elimination Chamber, being told that there was a. a a SmackDown men's elimination chamber and the following week I was told we're not doing that anymore so I'm like brilliant yeah <laughs> <laughs> is, brilliant is, good is, stuff is that how easy plans plans can change then yeah. in, in, changes in, like just like that it must be it must be very frustrating and you must have to just constantly adapt and roll with it and, and change yeah you know you have to change you have to adapt and you know it can be frustrating but at the same time you have to remember yourself like I'm getting to travel the world. Yeah. I'm getting to wrestle for the, like thousands of people. I'm having the crack. I'm doing something I've always dreamed of doing. And the residuals of that as well, is, you know, I, I get to come to Liverpool. I get to come to the Champions League game. I'm very blessed and very lucky in that perspective. You know, I've got to do a lot of really cool things because of my tenure in the WWE. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was the pace car driver for the Daytona 500, uh, where I basically got to drive around the track uh, with 40 muscle cars sit behind me. Like I literally did the whole yeah. track. Um, I had the CEO of Coca-Cola in the back <laughs> and uh, Trump, strangely enough, Trump's limo was in front doing doing a lap of the track. Yeah. So uh, uh, unbelievable. Like, I mean, that's, that's experience. Very, very few people get the experience, especially in the Daytona 500, which is the biggest NASCAR mm -hmm. race. But like stuff like that, man, it's like, that's not, how does that work? You know, it's not, it's, that's just, an un unbelievable opportunity and an unbelievable experience. So I'm blessed to that sense as well. So there are frustrating parts in any job you do. There are frustrating parts in my career in WWE. There's stuff I would have done better. There's stuff I would have, if I had the opp opportunity, I would have changed. But at the same time, I'm still here. I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. Um, I'm totally focused. I'm waiting for that opportunity to happen and a storyline I can stick my teeth into. And I'm just focused on that, on that intercontinental title. Have there been times in your career when the plans have changed and thrown something up that perhaps was unexpected that's worked out really well for you? And uh, yeah. Um, so at WrestleMania in Dallas, I thought I had no idea I wasn't going to go in against Roman for the title. I had a lot of heat. People hated me with the Mohawk. I won the money in the bank. I, I uh, broke kick Roman. Uh, I cashed in on Roman. And... Um, I had a lot of heat, man. Like Roman was getting cheers for the first time in a long time because mm. people hated me so much. 
Like they hated me. And I had such good crack too. Like that was the era when I went to uh, Manchester. Oh the yeah. Evening's right, Arena, yeah. I was singing You Never Walk Alone I and everything. Yeah. Just, uh, I, like the fans were going mental. Um, but it was great. And then I felt like that could have gone all the way to Mania because people hated me so much and they wanted to see Roman beat me. But they cut the legs off that after TLC and they went with Triple H and uh, Roman. But I know I could have we could have carried that all the way to Mania. It would have been awesome. Because they just, everybody wanted to see me get beat. They just, I don't know whether it was the mohawk or the or the the, bra, the braids the, and the beads and the beard. But man, I, it just wound up everybody, <laughs> including my ma. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, you're going to when you, your mum's turned on you. <laughs> um, your ma called me right away. What you do to your face? <laughs> I say, whoa, she goes, what are you, what's on your face? What you do to your lovely hair? <laughs> so, man, relax, will you? It's so, wrestling. Uh, the, as it stands then, what, what's the, is there a plan in place for, for yourself for WrestleMania? Um, there was plans. Um, they've changed, so I don't know. Drew McIntyre is a good friend of yours. He's going to headline WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, have you been mates. speaking to him and how, how pleased are you for him? I'm delighted for him, man. Um, I really am. He's... We started out together. Uh, he basically, when we did the tryout in Earl's Court in 2007, he stayed of mine. Um, and uh, we, you know, we wrestled each other in Ireland, Scotland, wrestled each other in the UK. And I mean, like, it was the UK, uh, down in England, in London. Um, and we got signed at the same day together. And then when he moved down from Louisville, he was in uh, OVW, you know, we still kept that strong bond. Uh, Wade as well. But like when he got released, man, that was a dark day, dude, for him. And uh, like, you know, he he lost focus. He'll tell you the same thing. He did an interview on Raw, which is very, very real, which I loved. Um, he lost focus and he got complacent and he, he wasn't blaming anybody. He was just blaming himself, you know. But he went away, man. He reinvented himself. Uh, got unbelievable shape. Uh, got focused. Um, he's got married. And uh, he uh, he's just come back a different animal. And it just it just goes to show, mate, like if you... you guys, He's gone from the, the bottom of the barrel, me, to the top. You know what I mean? Mm. Like it, it's incredible going in with Brock, and again a very, very uh, believable opponent, the Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Like looking down at Brock there last week, it's that doesn't happen much with Brock, you know. So it's just this is. I think this. I honestly think this is the match that people want to see. Um, I think that Brock's never like Brock has never really looked in danger as much as he looks in danger now, you know. He's, he's, he looks really, really threatened. His that title looks threatened. Yeah. And uh, it'd be great to see Drew uh, take that title and become the first ever British WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, that was something I was going to ask. Actually, you're looking at Brock Lesnar in his, his matches and very rarely does do opponents look like they're going to be able to beat him. But seeing Drew McIntyre, particularly at the Rumble and, and the, the way he eliminated him with that Claymore, he looks like someone who, who's going to be a real match for him. I think so, yeah. I, I agree. Um, I'd love to see him take it. Maybe not. It'd be uh, not would make me happier than to see him take that. And uh, just it just it just finishes an unbelievable story, you know. Um, it, he was a chosen one with WWE, and then you know obviously he just he lost he lost focus. You know what I mean? He got complacent, and then you know he got fired, and then he came back. He didn't he didn't blame anybody. You know, a lot of people when they get released, they're they're really really quick to to, to point the finger and blame other people. But he just blamed. He knew it was his fault, and he he just he just put his head down and, and just got stuck mm. in. You know what I mean? And uh, he's been through a lot too, man. He lost he lost his ma to uh, to cancer. Um, while he was while he was with WWE, and it was just like you know his ma was everything to him. And uh, I told him, I sent him a text, said, "Man, I said your ma's looking down, you're smiling right now. So proud of you, bro, for what you've done." what you've become and uh, so it's uh this is this is his mania man and this is this is going to be an, an incredible moment for him and for scotland or do i say britain what do i say if, if when the scots are winning yeah. when the scots yeah. are winning they're british <laughs> when they're losing uh, no sorry when they're winning they're uh they're british and uh, when they're losing they're scottish right the, un the old andy, andy murray yeah. Yeah. is that andy murray yeah. Yeah. wade used bar wade andy. bar used to take the piss out of drew all the time when, when andy murray would, would lose he go ah scottish yeah. the guys from that. and then when he'd win ah go on it's a great british Britain's man yeah. it would you know it would wind drew up so much <laughs> <laughs> oh god outside of the ring um, I, I remember the last time you were on um, 
you hadn't long been going with your YouTube channel, Celtic Warrior Workout. Yeah. I, I mean, it is just sort of blown up now and it seems like a huge passion of yours. It's a massive passion of mine. It's uh, it's incredible. Were you going to ask me something else or did I just... No, no, that was that, just a, I wanted to know about it. It's got 578,000 yeah. subscribers now. Dude, it, it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, the whole idea, as I said before, was to try and... Um, it was to, you know, motivate other people who, like... To, to, to get them to make a brave change. And there's so many people out there who like, w like they're not happy the way they look. They're not happy with their own diet, they, but they just don't know where to start. And going into gyms, especially, it can be very, very intimidating. And, you know, a lot of the trainers and stuff, I'm not knocking trainers, some great trainers out there, but sometimes you go in there, you sign up, a trainer will walk you through something once, and then you're on your own after that. Um, the idea premise was I was in a situation too at the time where I was just complacent. I was just tired. I was in a rut, my own workouts. And I started working out with other people. And uh, it just became this thing where I just, just filmed ni the 99th episode with uh, Jordan Devlin, who's the 205 champion. And, it, you know, just following other people's uh, journeys. And it's like all types of workouts. I've learned so much from doing them. And the great thing is if anyone, like all these all these people who are home watching, you know, they have their favorite superstars who are on the channel. They can, they can replicate their workouts. They might enjoy it, you know, give some confidence and they move on to another workout and another workout. There's so many different, and the whole point is it's, it's not ego driven. It's basically like every workout I'm in, I get my ass kicked. <laughs> and it's that message that sends other people is where like, listen, I've been training since I was 15 years old, right? I can't even do the math on that, whatever, how long that is, how long ago that is. I don't think I want to do the math on how long ago that is. But, uh, you know, if, I, if I've, done, I've been training that long and I'm lying on the floor in a heap or I look ridiculous doing some sort of like, you know, yoga or uh, the, the booty workouts or whatever it is with some of the girls, um, then there's no shame in, in you getting stuck in. And uh, I'm, I'm looking ridiculous because we don't want, we don't all start as experts. We have to start somewhere, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the response has been amazing. So many people's lives have changed. Like some of the comments are, are incredible, and that's that's how I know that the channel is working. It's just people are like are literally making a brave change or changing their lives, and they're working out again. They're enjoying it, and they're finding what works for them. Whether it's CrossFit, whether it's yoga, whether it's calisthenics, whether it's just weightlifting, you know, whether it's training at home. It's like it's it's. It's awesome. Is that something you see yourself doing beyond when you retire? Is that long term for you? Yeah, you know, the thing is, like, I'm not, I'm not really. I, I've been training a long time, but I'm not an expert in fitness, you know. Mm. Um, and that's that's the message that goes across there. You know, I'm just, I'll, I have the the notion I go in with is all I know is I know nothing. But I do enjoy doing the, the YouTube stuff. It's mm. fun. I like having the, the banter with the people I'm working out with, and uh, I just like you know spreading that message and and doing new things. Like I did one with Bobby Roode there, uh, the the one that's on there currently, and I did some shoulder stuff I'd never even seen. Mm -hmm. And that was just like, it was so educational for me. But I just like the banter, man. I like the yeah. banter, like having the crack while working out. And I think when you work out with somebody, I think it creates an unbelievable bond between the two of you. Um, you just come out on a different level. Like you go in kind of like, cause me and Bobby, like even Bobby, like I've, Bobby's in the locker room, how's it going? Robert Roode, I keep calling him Bobby, but you know, you see him all the time. Like, how's it going? What's the story? But not really. But after that, when he worked out with him, like we're just having the crack all the time mm -hmm. now. You know, like you just get to know each other, and yeah. you go through. You go through. It, it's you go through something special when you're working out with somebody. Yeah. But how, how does that all fit in around what is obviously a very well documented punishing schedule as, as being a, a WWE wrestler? It just fit it in. You know, just uh, any chance or opportunity I get, like on the road. So we had live events uh, up in the northeast. And I asked him, he said, yeah, so Sunday before the show, we got to the gym and um, I organized the, the gyms. I have a social media ladder trophy you quit at. Uh, he films it. And then you got to find the gym as well. And you got to ask him when you turn the music off because YouTube, like, have, like yeah. they, they try yeah. and get you on the, the, if, the copyright yeah. stuff, you know. But it's just, I'm passionate about it. So if you're passionate about something, uh, you make it work. Uh, no matter how tired you are, no matter what how tight the schedule is and again the great thing is as well is like i don't make it about myself uh, and i think that's what like attracts the other guys and girls to it you know is like it's about them that's why i always tell them this workout's not about me it's all about you and uh, i want to get your story out there and the way you work out there because there's like every superstar a man and woman where it's carmela cena kofi cesaro rusev like you know, Bob, uh, Robert Roode or, you know, Jordan Devlin or, or Becky, uh, 
they all have their own niche fan base. You know, they'll have like got, they've got their own hardcore fans mm -hmm. and they want to see how they work out and they want to see, they want to hear their story about how they started and what motivates them, how their, their training changed. And we do, I do my best. Uh, Ray, who edits all the videos, it's just the two of us to do it, man, just us two. We do our best to kind of get that message across and portray it as best we can. You got something big planned for the hundredth episode? I have a couple yeah. ideas, but one in one in mind. I'm still working on. <laughs> I'm getting there. It's just this. It's just it's gonna take a lot of convincing. Right. And um, who's put you through perhaps the most punishing or maybe the most interesting workout? Okay, so uh, there's so many workouts, right? To go back and think about from the beginning, it's it's to remember. It's hard, but the one that happened most recent and the one that really killed me was Zia Lee. Never if you ever have a chance, she's uh, she's Chinese. She's an unbelievable athlete. She's just, uh, she's like kickboxing, taekwondo. She's got like a lot of martial arts. She's in the gym like twice a day. Um, everybody at the performance center when I went down there, when I, was, I was down there for my return, my in-ring return, they're all, they said, she's going to kick your ass, fella. <laughs> she is going to kick your ass. And uh, she kicked the <laughs> shite out of me <laughs> all over that place. I was... Dying, like I literally like, <laughs> oh man, you, you gotta go back and watch it. And then category, the yeah. Zoya Lee workout, mate, watch her, she's a machine. And at the end of it, she was grand. My t-shirt, you look like it, you dipped it in a swimming pool, man, <laughs> and I, when I rang it out. But uh, she's definitely one of my favorites down there. She's gonna be a huge star for in the women's division for NXT and for WB or for and WB in the yeah. future. But she kicked the crap out of me, man. I'm telling you, dude, I was, I was having nightmares about that workout for weeks afterwards. Not invite it back on? I don't know, man. <laughs> don't I don't know. Stomach for it again. I, yeah. need one, I, need, I need one of those hyperbaric chambers or something <laughs> to, to keep, to, to recover after it. I don't know, man. Maybe one a year. You know what I mean? It's like, it was like going on a, a week bender. Yeah, that's, that's how bad my body felt after. I felt like I was drinking for an entire week. Oh my God. All right, move, moving on slightly. First of all, before we continue, are you going to have a word with Triple H to tell him to send Liverpool a yes. world title? When so I talked about that today to BT Sport. Um, I'm really excited about getting a W title with the customised Liverpool plates. I want to personally deliver that title myself. Yeah. 30 years, I want to be the one. Um, I've mentioned that already. To, we have a, uh, a great UK team over here as well. Um, and I, I got to mention it again to them and to Triple H. I'll, I'll send them a, shoot them a text because it's getting really, really close now, you know. Yeah. I would like we could be literally next mm. week. So I want to get on that um, and get that sorted because that's going to be a huge deal. I'll try to get one for Celtic too, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah. they, uh, I don't know what happened there because I know Celtic, I mean, Celtic win it pretty much every year, you know, but um, but yeah, I, this, is, this is huge. I want to be the one presenting that that title to Liverpool. So when Liverpool, well, if Liverpool lifted the Premier League title in the final home game against Chelsea, they could have a little five minute ceremony before that where you, and deliver the title to Jürgen Klopp. That'd be amazing. Can we sort that out, Ernie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll love to see Klopp with the title. Yeah. <laughs> the I think that'd be amazing. brilliant. Yeah, yeah I think it'd be amazing. Yeah. It's so funny too, when you see, um, when you see the players like, with the belt still, when I grab the title, you know what I mean? Or the mm. belt, or whatever, they all grab it and they're all taking it, taking mm -hmm. it. It's every, it just turns, it turns grown men <laughs> into children, <laughs> just having that put it on their shoulder. It really does. I, I've seen it happen, like NFL players, NHL players, baseball players. They just, they literally turn into little kids yeah. when they have that belt in their hands. Everyone's grown up wanting to hold the WWE title, haven't they? I mean, you've done it, but everyone I know, was grown up wanting to hold that. It's yeah, that's ambition. that's the one. I, my, mine was the winged yeah. eagle one that uh, oh, yeah. Macho yeah. Man had, yeah. and Ultimate yeah. Warrior Bret had, yeah. and Bret had. Yeah. yeah, that was that was the one. That, and so funny, this the 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 belts or titles, as they they their titles, not to say belts, but they they change. Um, they've changed, you know, over the years. They're updated. They're modernized. Yeah. And it's funny when you talk to uh, to people different age groups, you know, and different generations, like what title is their favorite like the winged eagle for me then there was another one the austin one so then there was the one that brock yeah. 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 yeah so it's funny that it it's what brings them back to a kid and what they remember yeah. their bet their favorite moments at wwe and, and what title was there at the time the, the white intercontinental was one of mine and then they, yeah. they brought it back to me a few years ago yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, the new one looks okay i just you get so used to looking at the ic title 
the way that that kind of classic yeah. look, yeah. you know. But yeah. again, they changed them. Um, who? I mean, you've kind of given this away before by saying that you'd want him as your tag team partner. But we were going to say who'd win a, a Liverpool Royal Rumble? Is it Virgil all day long? I definitely yeah. So the Rumble is a different thing. It, Virgil, obviously, for for the physical aspect. But then, uh, then you always have the, the little Ray Mysterios. So maybe Andy Robertson. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Andy Robertson comes off with a hurricane. You know what I mean? And, and takes Virgil over the top rope. You know what I mean? Could be it. Yeah. Could be. Always, it's either it's sometimes the obvious ones, and sometimes it's the ones that you least expect. I feel Andy Robertson could actually. Yeah, I think he's he's, he's got a little bit a little bit about him, hasn't he? Robertson. He has. yeah. I could imagine Robbo like sort of sneaking under the bottom rope, faking injury for a little bit, and yeah. letting others yeah. letting others take each other out, and then just. And, and he's somewhere. fast too, you know. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. thing. He'd be yeah. quick. He wouldn't even know he's there and he's tipped you over the top rope. So Trent, Trent's quick. I want to take him quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Trent. Yeah. Yeah. Who's faster, Robbo or, or, or Trent? I think if you'd asked either of them, they'd, they'd say it was them, but um, <laughs> it'd be, be a quick one, wouldn't it? Yeah. be a good race. Yeah. I love that rivalry between yeah. the two with the two fullbacks. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Like, it just really is. just a great, like, really, really cool competition, competitive vibe between the two of them, you know? Yeah. So we could ask you about tag team partner, but you've answered that as well. Yeah, Virgil. yeah, yeah, Virgil. If not, Virgil. Barham, if we've already won the league by Manchester City. Yeah, I didn't know that was on the same day as Mania. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> if they could win it there, though, imagine it. I mean, yeah, well, I'll, I'll have it on my phone. It'll be, yeah. it'll be because we're on the uh, on the East Coast. It'll, the match will happen yeah. like uh, wait before Mania starts, so I'll get to see. Yeah, it. It might be about f- f- four or five hours. Yeah, a- yeah, after the game. Yeah. Yeah. Tough one now for you. You were there, Liverpool winning the Champions League. Liverpool winning the Champions League or winning your first WWE title? You can only pick one. Ah, oh, man. I'm just going to have to be selfish here and go my first <laughs> oh, WWE title. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That that was special for me, beating yeah. John Cena at TLC. Nobody saw it coming. Mm. I came out of nowhere and won it, you know. But, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got to be selfish here. My first WWE title is, was special. And how fast it can. Actually, talking about Drew, Drew won the Intercontinental title, his first Intercontinental title, the same day I won my first WWE title. So it was really cool, man. We yeah. went to Chili's or something, whatever, and uh, we were both sitting there as champions. It was cool. Man, I just wish we had some pictures of that, dude. Yeah. Like, it would have been, a, just, it's just a great story, you know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, that was a really, that was an unbelievable day. I forgot to mention before, you mentioned Celtic. Were you a bit gutted when Stevie turned up at Rangers? No, it wasn't. Um, I'm at the I'm of the, the belief that, uh, like, I don't know if like every Celtic fan is gonna tr- like just want to lynch me here or that, but like, <laughs> I, I firmly believe that like, you know, Celtic and Rangers are are the pinnacle of of Scottish football, right? So when Rangers got relegated, you know, obviously like the Celtic fans were slagging them all off and everything. But you need both teams. Yeah, yeah, you need true. them. You need a competitive. Division. If if Celtic run away without you know, if they run away ahead of Rangers and everything, like you know what I mean. You know, does it obviously there's a lot. Of, there's a it's just, it's a, one of the biggest like rivalries in the game. Like and yeah. it makes Scottish football what it is. I'm like I'm not taking away from Aberdeen or Hibs or the Fairman or Motherwell or any of those other teams. I'm just saying like like when they went down, I feel like Scottish football suffered. You need that, and I think Gerard going to to, to Rangers, it creates a great rivalry because mm. that's what you want, right? You want two teams pushing each other because that will lead itself into into Europe. Now, you know what I mean? That raises the game. They, they raise the game against each other and you put the pressure on each other and then that that, that transfers into Europe. You know what I mean? Like Drew's a, Drew's a Rangers fan, you know what I mean? I'm a Celtic, you know, Celtic fan. Like people go, oh, if I ever wore a Celtic jersey, people are like, oh, but you're a Liverpool fan. And different. If you're Irish, pretty much everybody yeah. in Ireland yeah. follows Celtic. It's just, it's it's other team, you know. My passion, first team, without a doubt, was Liverpool. But I definitely have, I have a really have soft spot for Celtic. I do, the team itself, I love Celtic as well. But like Liverpool, obviously my first team. But, um, but yeah, you have to have that right. Am I wrong with that? No, no. And, no, I, no, and no. I think Gerard no, brings no. that. And I'm, I'm a big fan of Gerard. I'll always be a massive fan of Gerard for what he, for first service to Liverpool. So I think it's the best thing to happen to that, happen to those two, that, the, that league and, and those two teams. Cause you know, they really need to push themselves to get better in European competition. Cause that, that's what, that's what that league needs. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you say that um, Celtic won the, the treble, treble, didn't he? Well, yeah. Rangers were trying to build themselves back up and then finally 
Gerard's come in and, and given them a massive boost. Okay, it looks like Celtic might win the title again this season, but but not as easy as they have. Exactly, it's been yeah. a lot closer than it has over the last you know five or six years, definitely. And credit to, to Stephen Gerrard for, for doing that. Yeah, like listen, this season's fantastic for us for a lot of reasons for Liverpool. Like, what are we now? Twenty five points ahead or something? Mm-hmm. Twenty three, twenty five points ahead of Man City. That's fantastic. It's a great brag and Roy. We've waited thirty years to get the league. It's like okay, this is it. You know what I mean? But imagine that happened every year. Like, imagine it was like yeah. every year Liverpool were twenty. You kind of be like, as a Liverpool fan, yeah. But then you're like, it just, it just. I feel like it takes that edge. It just, it takes that edge off it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like. And you know, it's just, you just come com- complacent and yeah. it's the same old thing, you know? So like last season, for example, I know we lost out by a point, but what, what a season that mm-hmm. was like all the way to the end. Yeah. And that company scored that goal. I was like, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's, that's my point anyway. Yeah. No, I, I hate to say it, but I, I think it would have been better to win it last season by a point than it would have been on the final day. Well, this season, yeah. unfortunately. But, uh, finally, some quick fire questions. Sure. Uh, three for Liverpool. Um, and three for your own career, um, all time. So Liverpool player, your favourite all time. I'm going to go with John Aldridge. John Aldridge, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you know. why. Because as a, as a kid, I watched him play a prolific goal scorer for, for Liverpool. Devastated when they sold him to Real Madrid or Real Sociedad. Um, but after meeting him, they say, you know, some people say, don't ever meet your idols, right? I am so happy I met him. He is one of the nicest, soundest lads I have ever met. Yeah. Um, absolute legend, gent, so much passion for Liverpool, probably more passion for Liverpool now than he did when he was actually playing, which is hard to believe. But uh, definitely, definitely my favourite Liverpool player of all time. And an Ireland international. And an course. Ireland international yeah. To, yeah. Uh, that as well. But man, what a what an unbelievable uh, person. Echo Collins yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, we, we can agree with that, can't we? Yeah, very happy with mm-hmm. that. Uh, match? Have to be Liverpool, uh, Liverpool, Barcelona. Yeah, have to yeah. be. That was, and those um, five people you shared it with. Yeah, that bar. you pints of water. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> you know those <laughs> those five people in that bar might be massive Liverpool fans now. You never yeah. know. Yeah. I could have changed the game for those five. <laughs> Arnie, you look at your phone. Why you look at the time? Oh. All right. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> one. Can we put the camera on Arnie there. Gonna, <laughs> people are going to be dying to know who you are. <laughs> 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 Finally, one one Liverpool moment. Uh, one Liverpool moment. Yeah. Uh, lifting lifting the um, lifting the Champions League in Istanbul. Yeah. Wasn't uh, I was at the bar in Dublin, and three 0 down and three all. I was just like it was an unbelievable moment. Yeah. I just yeah, let's get there. Goosebumps. Okay, for your own career opponent. My favourite opponents, yeah. I have to be Cesaro. Yeah, yeah. We knocked the, the shit out of each other for years, and then we finally got that feud. The best of seven, um, best opponent, favourite opponent, and, fa- and favourite uh, uh, partner in the wrestling ring, tag right. partner. Match. Daniel Bryan, two out of three falls, Extreme Rules, two thousand twelve, mm-hmm. tied with me and Cesaro in the best of seven. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'll tell you what, the best is ever matches Cesaro, only because people were, were kind of like, they just, people were like, by the time, when we did the best of seven, people were kind of crapping on it going, oh, we've seen them wrestle too many times, nobody cares, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, when we got to the last match in Indianapolis, people were chanting, this is awesome. And then at the end, when the referee was calling the fight, they were like, let them fight, let them fight. We tore the house down um, when people didn't even give us a chance. The Brian match was fantastic for a lot of reasons. It was one of my favorite, but like for the, the the Cesaro match for a lot of reasons that we were just we were fighting the tide at the end of it. Everybody just wanted to, we fought so many times. People were like, mm. I'm tired of seeing them fight. At the end of the match, they wanted to see us fight. You know what I mean? It was just such an unbelievable U turn, um, an incredible atmosphere. Fair say that that is an example of a really good storyline. Yeah, went into completion. Yeah. Well, we'd already wrestled twice before we started the best of seven. Yeah, then yeah. Foley put us together and everybody was crapping in it or shitting on it, whatever you want to say. If you can say that or you can beep that out, whatever. But they really were. And it was like, we were going in, my God, we got to just, we really got to tear it up. And they're just, every every match we had, people were like just running it down, uh, boring, this and that. And then by the time we got that last match, people just wanted to see us again. They wanted to see us fight again and again and again. That's... That, that itself was just a testament to, to how hard we worked and how hard we kicked lumps out of each other. Yeah. 
And finally, let's just finish on your favorite moments of your career. <sighs> It'll be the next one, winning the Intercontinental Championship and completing the Ultimate Grand. You can become the first ever WWE Grand Slam champion. Ultimate Grand Slam champion. I'll say that one more time. Becoming the first ever Ultimate Grand Slam champion. That's oh. going to be my favorite moment. What a way to finish. Brilliant, Chavis. <laughs> always a pleasure. Thank you very Patrick's much. Patrick's on mine. Thanks for letting me come in here and waffle on to you for a bit. <laughs> we here an hour? With that hour-long podcast? 50 minutes. Enjoyed it. New records being said all the time in this place. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. You can go and get some sleep, hopefully. No, no, no. Yeah, I'll drink too much coffee. Yeah. Cheers.